Well, you know, one of the really interesting things is uh, that that concept of I strike you so that I can heal you is really important. And um, the whole time from the from the time the Jewish people get into the promised land and then soon at la- soon after that, they have a king. And all the way through those kings, uh, some of them lead the country well, and the people seem to turn to God during those times. And then other kings, um, they hedge their bets. And instead of just worshiping Yahweh, they'll worship Yahweh and Baal. If you read carefully, there's it's hmm. not too often that the Jewish or the Israelite kings, the ones in the north or the ones in the south, abandon Yahweh. It doesn't happen a whole lot. Usually they're, they're worshiping Yahweh, and then to hedge their bet, they'll worship Chemosh or, oh. or Baal. And so so there's this, but right at the beginning when they came into the promised land and were given the law, it said, don't worship other gods and don't worship me the way the Canaanites worship their gods. And, we, and the Israelites did that. So for instance, the golden calves in the Northern Kingdom, when the two kingdoms split, the um, Jeroboam built a temple in the north and a temple in the south. That's already going against the word. Uh, Deuteronomy said, I'm, there's, you're gonna, I'm going to show you a place to build the central place of worship, hmm. which is fascinating. He didn't tell them what it was going to be. So he, sa- he said, I'm going to give you one central place of worship. And I think that's to indicate God is one. That's a, it's a huge mm-hmm. thing for the ancient world to learn. They looked at, they looked at nature and they said, "There's a God of of uh, the the sky, or the guy of of a God. I'm sorry, a God of thunder, a God of the sea, a God of fertility. It, it makes sense. They look at all the powers in nature and they saw they they thought they were divine. Well, that's what God was working against. That there is but one God, and there's one place you worship Him, Jerusalem." at the temple. Well, instead of doing that, they continued to worship Yahweh, but they would, um, you know, they'd also worship the fertility God or the God of the storm or the God of the sea. And finally, God said, you have to go into exile. That was the, the supreme punishment in a way, mm-hmm. because the Israelites at that point had four things. They had they had uh, they were a people, and they had a land that had been promised to them. They had the law through uh, through Moses. They had a king through David, and they had a temple, this special place to worship Yahweh. They lost three of those, and they were thrown into exile. They lost a king, they lost the land, and they lost um, the temple. Hmm. And then they were thrown into Babylonian exile. And you know what? Those that weren't really serious, I think, became. Babylonian pagans. Mm. But those that were serious, they got together and they started a new institution. They started the synagogue. What do you do at a synagogue? Hmm. You read the law. The priests were scattered throughout Israel before the exile. And the reason was so they would teach the people the law. Apparently, they did not do a good job. I think it was Jehoshaphat that uh, told the priest, now you're supposed to teach the people. They didn't really do it. Oh, this is fascinating. I've never, I've never <laughs> thought of that before. Well, now they go yeah. into exile. Okay. They've, and they've got one thing. Uh, I call them the mainstays of the, of the Israelite people. <clears throat> they've got the law. They start the temple. Every Sabbath, you read a part of the law and you talk about it and you pray. And those that stayed faithful became more faithful, became more knowledgeable, and understood Yahweh better mm-hmm. than their than their forefathers had. And when they come back, there's very little um, of the kind of idolatry or mixing of religion that happened all the time before the exile. So yeah. God had to, just like He had to do the flood. God is God doesn't want to punish us, but He did the flood. Uh, because it was necessary, he, it was the, it was necessary to do the exile to get these people to the place where the Messiah finally could come. It's like a, again that incremental thing. It's yeah. like okay, the next yeah. next piece, and the next yeah. it's like we're slowly building up, and then yeah. Messiah. And and so yeah, for even okay. even before the exile, they had all they had the law, but then they got all these prophets mm. telling them. Isaiah is beautiful. Uh, it's it's 150 years before the exile. And at least the first part of it is, and he uh, he tells them, uh, "You're you're sinning against me. Um, I have a I have an accusation against you." 
And so please straighten up, but you're not going to. You are, you are going into exile. I am going to strike you. But then he also tells them what's going to happen later. Mm-hmm. So there's this, there is this picture in Isaiah of, of um, our, our wandering away from God is going to bring uh, repercussions, but God is not going to give up on us and he's going to give us this glorious future. So they had something they they had something to look back at and say, you know what, we earned this. Mm-hmm. And they also had something to look forward to, and they started trying to understand who this guy, who who this God is, who Yahweh is. Mm-hmm. 